All right, everyone, I wanted to just hop on here, do a unedited, unscripted video of just me talking, giving you my insight about how to trade the market technically and psychologically. There's a lot of lessons to be learned, especially with the current market conditions. As I'm recording this video before the, the year ends, it's December 20th. It's a Wednesday. We obviously saw, if you were trading today, a very large sell-off in the market. And I want to talk about how to trade this because what I've been seeing the past month, month and a half, ever since November had started, if you trade the S&P 500, if you trade the NASDAQ, if you trade the Dow Jones or any really major market name, we've seen very, very strong rallies in these names. Now the market has made an all time high, especially with the contracts rolling over. We have the holidays coming up. We have a new year. And we saw something very similar. If you were to go back to the charts and look at the end of 2021, we saw a very, very similar market where we keep climbing past all time highs. The volume is significantly lower and we are just slowly grinding up higher and higher. And that's something that we've seen on the S&P and the NASDAQ the past couple of weeks. Now, I've seen a countless amount of people trying to short this rally up. Now, for me personally, one of my rules of thumb is to not short a market when it makes an all time high. So let's just take a step back a second and we have to understand how a market auctions and how it facilitates trade. An auction, specifically a market such as the stock market, no matter what instrument you trade, Forex, futures, options, the market simply will move up until the last buyer buys and the market moves down until the last seller sells. Now, when the market's making an all time high, there is zero downside pressure in the market, meaning there is zero pressure to traders who are buying an all time high break. There are shorts built into the market. Bulls are happy, especially if the thing keeps climbing up and up. In fact, those who are shorting the market without understanding this concept technically are buyers. Now, what we've seen in the S&P 500, just looking at this chart ever since the start of November, we've consistently made higher highs and consistently made higher lows. Now, this rally has simply been fueled by traders trying to short breakouts to the upside and trying to call a top or catch an upside reversal. Now, if you're scalping the market, the rules can be tweaked a little bit because you know, if you're scalping, you're really looking to capitalize on like quick short term price fluctuations. But if you're looking to catch a top and call in a high and trying to catch a really large reversal in the market, if you try to do so on any single high that was made in the past month, month and a half, ever since November started, you would have been screwed. Now, shorts, when they enter the market, technically are buyers. So if a short is coming into the market, for that short to exit a position, a short has to buy to cover. So technically, how I view shorts are last buyers in the market. Now, the market will simply move up until the last buyer buys. So what we've seen since November started on the NASDAQ, on the S&P, on the Dow, other equities, even Forex uh, instruments, we've seen the market continue to rally up and up. And this was partially fueled by shorts trying to capitalize on reversing the market and trying to call a top. The market will move up until the last buyer buys. If shorts continuously get squeezed out, that's just going to further cause an upside rally and more short covering rallies up. Once shorts become not squeezed and until shorts become bullish. So when everybody that was bearish turns bullish, that's when you will most likely everything comes down to probability. So everything that I'm saying cannot be used 100% with accuracy. Everything in the market comes down to probabilities like you're never ever going to be able to buy the bottom and sell the top. You just have to trade when the odds are in your favor or when the probabilities are to your advantage. So once shorts stop becoming squeezed and once shorts or bears turn bullish, that is when we get that downside pressure. And that's when a lot of the times we see a lot of reversals coming into the market. If we were to go back to the end of 2021, 
the start of 2022 when the NASDAQ and specifically in this example, the S&P 500 made all time highs. Let me see if I can go to the chart here. You can see it on my screen now. I'll share my screen. Here's an example on a daily chart when the S&P 500 made an all time high at the end of 2021 start of 2022. What we can see here is the market had a very large rally and then the market formed a consolidation high and then eventually broke that high. Once the last shorts get squeezed and the shorts turn bullish and the shorts stop out and that buying activity gets shut down, that's a good indication that downside pressure is evident and a reversal could come. Again, this is a daily chart on the S&P at the end of 2021, start of 2022. Now, if we were to look at today's action on the 20th of December, we can see a very similar chart, but now this is on a 15 minute chart. We could see the market had a very strong rally. We could see consolidation and then the market broke that high and then had a very large sell off. We can also see this on an intraday perspective. This rally where my cursor's at right now is when the market opened at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. We got a very large rally. In fact, a very good friend of mine and those who are in the investor trade community, you know Dylan. Dylan had a very excellent thesis of shorting the S&P 500 today on its rally. The VIX was had a very large divergence. The VIX was rallying. So that was kind of an indication that this move may be fake or this move may get sold into. Again, the market always leaves its clues. And our job as traders is to read these clues to the best of our ability. So what my buddy Dylan saw was equities such as Tesla and Apple at key resistance and key supply levels. And he saw the S&P rally up, form this high and consolidate, saw selling volume step in, and the telltale sign was how VIX was very, was I'm not gonna say uh, rallying, but I'm gonna say was relatively stronger compared to how the S&P was trading at that time. This clear divergence, he saw comfortable enough risk to take the market short around 10.45, uh, 11 o'clock. I forgot the exact time he took it short, but he took it short on this consolidation range over here. About an hour, hour and a half later, the market broke the high and his short position got squeezed. He had to cover and he had to buy back. Remember what I said earlier, the market moves up until the last buyer buys and until shorts or bears turn bullish. Him having to stop out above that high, again, the market broke the high, his order, I'm not gonna say his order caused the sell off because obviously it did not, but where he stopped out was the exact high of day today. It's unfortunate because he had the right thesis, wrong timing, the market eventually sold off. But the point I'm trying to get here is if I were to look at majority of the nice sell offs that I take or the majority of the times that I try to catch highs is when the market makes a high, starts to find selling pressure at that high, then breaks that high, and then immediately sells off with continued selling pressure, similar to what we saw today intraday, and similar to what we saw intra, uh, on a daily chart back at the end of 20, uh, 2021, start of 2022. Now, when the market is uptrending like this, it's okay to take it short, but I find it to be a lower probability of a setup because like I said, when there is zero downside pressure, that means no shorts have really been screwed yet. Once shorts become screwed and they turn bullish, that's when we're going to get that downside reversal. Now, the problem with this today was I saw people all over social media. And if you agree with this, just let me know in the comments. I want to make sure I'm not the only one that saw this. I logged on to Twitter today and I was looking at some other traders, even on like Instagram and everybody was like, oh, puts printed and oh, uh, I, I, I told you guys the market was going to sell off and oh, I knew the high was coming and yeah, we were going to sell off. I knew a sell off was coming. I did not know when it was coming. A sell off was very obvious to come. A sell off was needed. A cool down period was needed and today we got it. But the same people that said, oh, I knew this market was going to sell off today or, oh, puts printed. Yes, they printed. Yes, you could have easily made money off of this. And I'm sitting here because I obviously did not capitalize on this downside move. I wasn't even at my monitors at the time of the sell off. But what I'm trying to say here is the same people that you see all over social media saying, oh, I caught the top. Even if they did catch the top, I can guarantee you if we were to go back to November to now, those were the same people that were trying to short every single rally. 
And just because they made money on a, what, 70-point sell-off today, 100-point sell-off today, we have to look back and see all the other times they tried to short this rally in November and December. Just because we saw the market sell off 100 points doesn't mean much if they tried shorting it four or five other times in November, December. So there's a lot of noise and there's a lot of nonsense. And this brings me up to my point. Like if you made money today and you saw a setup, excellent. Like, I mean, there was money to be made and that's how you have to trade. You find opportunity and you manage your risk. You know, no one's ever going to know what happens next, but if you have a plan, your edge is present, you find opportunity and you can manage risk. Who cares if Carmine's sitting up here and saying not to short all time highs until downside pressure forms. You know, if you had a plan, edge is present and risk is managed, you take that setup regardless of whatever anybody else says or regardless of what you think is going to happen as long as your risk is managed. Now, how I prefer trading this is this gives me clues now moving forward. I try to protect myself and not try to call a market high or a market top. The market is constantly presenting new information on a daily chart, on a five minute chart, on an hourly chart, right? This new information, we must be able to read properly and understand the story the market's telling us in order to take quality setups based off of this new information. It's a, it, it's a, it's a constant uh, mechanism that's developing new information and our job is to read this information. So how I read this information, especially when the market is acting the way it is, is now that we have downside pressure forming, now we have shorts built into the market, we have prices that are above us where shorts are built in. We have longs who are going to be screwed that we're longing the uh, rollover, that we're longing this all-time high breakout. If these guys start going underwater, these longs, that's just going to further cause a sell-off down. And if shorts continue to put pressure, this downside risk or this downside pressure is just going to further cause more of a sell-off. So instead of trying to call a top or catch a market high, don't feel bad that you missed maybe the short today because I know a lot of people watching this, including myself, missed the short side move. And there was a shit ton of money to be made today. Insane amounts of money could have been made today. And yes, I'm sitting here with some type of FOMO. Absolutely, I can't sit here and say like, oh, you know, that um, I feel great that I missed this move because I don't. It was a solid sell-off with a lot of easy money to be made if you got a good entry. But... New information the market's presenting is going to give us an opportunity now tomorrow, next week, to start the new year, that with this sell-off, it's going to give us clear signs of what the market could possibly do next. So now going back to what I said earlier about not shorting the market when there's zero downside pressure. Now we have, uh, zero, now we have downside pressure. So what I like doing is I like focusing, if I were to go to a five-minute chart, I like focusing on the action that I saw from today's sell-off and if I were to go depth in depth in my levels this would take another 30 minutes of this video I try to post all my levels every single day in the discord of exactly what I'm watching but now that we have this sell-off we have things that formed from this drop that's gonna give us clues about the markets next move if we move up you want to see the sellers that formed on this drop defend price at important key levels of resistance key levels on the tape and key levels of supply. This is talking about the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones, Forex, crypto. The concepts all relate no matter what you trade. So A, you want to see sellers or shorts defend price from the sell-off at specific levels that formed the drop. If you're bullish, you want to see those shorts get screwed and go underwater and continue to short the market when we reverse up, further causing another short covering rally validating what we saw all of November. And that is pretty much what I'm watching moving forward. So this information, yes, I missed the short, but this information is giving me clear signs that I did not have all of December or that I did not have all of November. So now shorts become a very important question to me about the information the market's going to provide me tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, Monday, every other day moving forward. Now that we have this type of action, Bullish or bearish, it doesn't matter. I don't care if the market goes up or down. It's going to give me important clues that I could use that information to take high quality setups. And I'm not sitting here, um, I'm not going to say regretting not taking this setup. Again, like I'm trying to make this relatable because I'm sure a lot of you watching this did miss this setup. And I'm sure a lot of you watching this probably did take this setup and made money on it. 
right? But maybe you went against your plan. And that's not going to be good in the long term if you go against your plan and make money on it one time. That could be the most expensive profit you've ever made. So that's pretty much what I'm watching moving forward. If you're sitting here with regret, if you're sitting here with FOMO, there will be opportunities based off of this. And now that we have this type of action, it's going to give us important clues that if the market does want to sell off, we can easily capitalize on this with a high quality setup and high opportunity or high probability of the market moving in our favor. So that's pretty much it. Again, this is an unscripted, unedited type of video. If you like these videos and you want me to do more of these, I'll come on here. Again, I'm transparent about everything. I'll keep it real, raw, authentic with you all. If you enjoyed this, I would just appreciate if you hit the thumbs up button so I know you enjoyed it. Comment if you did, comment any questions, and definitely hit that subscribe button for my channel. Peace.